It's 26th of June already. A couple of days ago, I had another set anniversary, four months in the army. This means that it is already the fifth month of a full-scale nightmarish war. Remember what you did in the last four months? How many times did you go to the theater, to the exhibitions, to a restaurant, or just for a walk with friends and family? Even if you did it only once, this is already more than thousands of recent Ukrainian civilians, men and women, who all these months have been cut off from their loved ones, from their usual way of life, from familiar activities and simple joys. Or simple joys. You don't understand how they are missing until you lose them. My friends and I bought pizza not so long ago. Cheesy on raw, barely fried dough and with a completely tasteless feeling. And for some huge money, we drove through a small town in which there was a pizzeria or something that pretends to be a pizzeria. Since there are no other such establishments in the town, the owners of the pizzeria, taking advantage of the position of the monopolists, sell their pieces of dough at the prices of real Napoli pizzas. We settled down with these pizzas on the bench and ate them with pleasure. Honestly, four months ago, I would have returned them to the seller and demanded a refund. But now we ate these inedible cakes as if they were the most incredible delicacies. I think this is how longing for an ordinary peaceful life manifests itself. Anything that even slightly reminds of it becomes a real treasure. It is not only those who have joined the army who suffer from the forced abandonment of their usual way of life. The entire nation was horribly traumatized. There is not a single person who hasn't been hurt by this wild, nasty war. There is not a single Ukrainian whose life has not been broken in one way or another by Russia. The widow of my friend who died a few weeks ago posts videos and photos of her husband on social networks every day. A cheerful and very bright guy, kind and absolutely non-confrontational. They had not seen each other since the first day of the war. He went to the front as a volunteer and after almost four months he returned home in a coffin. And I can't imagine how his wife and his children live now, what kind of storms are tearing their hearts apart. For the second month now, my colleague has been putting things in order in her apartment in Bucha, where Russian invaders were stationed in the first weeks of the war. They made such a bedlam in the apartment that even a few people could not quickly make out cleaning up the dirt after those who came to kill you and take over your country is something else. Can you imagine the nervous shock this young girl lives with? My friend, a human rights activist who before the war helped Russian political immigrants to legalize themselves in Ukraine and after the outbreak of the war joined the army a few days ago he was taken prisoner. Now he himself is in the hands of those FSB butchers from whom he saved other people. My girlfriend writes me that a neighbor behind the wall of our apartments cries out loud every night. Her husband was killed in the Donetsk region and she was left all alone. Her husband, already a middle-aged man, left as a volunteer, couldn't stand aside when the whole nation rose up against the enemy. None of these people wanted war and did not expect it. It came to us against our will. The people who are going through tragedy after tragedy right now are not different from you. I bet you also don't like war, destruction and death. We think that is we are just very unlucky with geography. We are very close to the New Reich, which has completely gone crazy. Oh, and I have some news about me and my family. I think I can tell you about it in one of the next episodes, so stay in touch.